Good morning, friends. Welcome to Easter worship with First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, here in South Portland, Maine. I am the Reverend Allison Buttrick Patton. I use she, her pronouns. And I am the Reverend Stephen Savage, and I use he, him pronouns. And we are joined this morning by our co-music directors, Terry Foster on organ and piano, and Deirdre McClure, who is directing our choir. We also this morning have our whole meeting house choir, our handbell and chimes choirs, and Skylar Keter Masewski on French horn. Together, we invite you to join us for a joyful worship. If you are joining us at home, you are being hosted by Alex Rata on our live stream. I invite you all to turn and to wave to the camera up in the center and up to Alex in the balcony, remembering that we are one extended community of faith, worshiping here and further afield. If you are a guest in our midst this morning, a first-timer or a sometimer, I call your attention to the narrow welcome cards that you'll find in the pews if you're here in the sanctuary. I invite you to take a moment to fill out the bottom. You can tear it off, put it in the box at the back of the sanctuary, or hand it to an usher so that you can be included in the news that's happening at First Congregational Church from week to week. If you are at home and would like to be added to our list, please make a note in the chat or reach out to one of us, and we will make sure to get you added. This morning, we will celebrate communion together, and so if you are worshiping with us from home, I invite you to take a moment to go and to find food and drink, bread or muffin or crackers or something to have at hand. When we gather around for communion, we will bless all our tables. Today... This service is an all-ages Easter worship service. There won't be a Sunday school class, as often there is on Sundays, but there will be a number of different ways for our youngest, our youngest congregants to participate in today's worship. We will also have, uh, well, we also do have children's bulletins for anyone who's in need of one. They should be available in the narthex, some opportunities to color, and an opportunity to play worship bingo to see if you're paying attention. I know you all are. (laughs) And also uh, drawing supplies, just in general, for anyone who needs them on the table in the back. I don't think those are restricted to just children. Just saying. All right. See, I knew we'd have a taker. (laughs) After the worship service, I invite any of our young folks to join together and head upstairs for an Easter egg hunt. There are an abundance of eggs hidden up there, so if you feel like participating, I think we can, uh, we can guarantee a good time. And then, of course, there's social hour after worship for all of us to gather in the right pavilion uh, because... It is good to be together. I think that's everything. I think that's everything. We commend to you the announcements that you'll find in the bulletin about events that are upcoming in the life of the church. And with that, people of God, come, old and young and in between, full of faith and plagued by doubt. Whomever you love, however you move through the world, we are so glad that you are here. There are words to recognize the significance of welcome that are printed in your bulletin and will show up on your screen. I invite you to say them together now. No matter matter who who you are or or where where you you are are on life's journey, journey, you you are welcome welcome here. here. Hearing that, friends, I invite you now to take a deep and spirit-filled breath, to settle into your seats and to imagine, if you will, an early morning, just before dawn, 
The sun is peeking over the horizon, and a group of women, deeply grieved, are making their way to the tomb of their beloved teacher, arms full of spices to tend to the body. And then they stop in their tracks. The stone in front of the tomb has been rolled away. What could it mean? Beloved, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Friends, would you rise on your feet or in your hearts as we call ourselves to worship? Yesterday, we thought death had won. Yesterday, we thought all was lost. Yesterday, we thought Christ was gone. We have reason to hope. We have reason to sing. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us worship the God of life. As we sing together our opening hymn, number 205, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, we invite the young people to come forward and join us at the front of the sanctuary to adorn our cross with flowers. So come on down and lend us a hand. Let us sing together.
in the Gospel of Luke, the women come to the tomb, and to their surprise, instead of finding Jesus, they find angels. And the angels tell the women, he's not here. And when that answer is met with confusion, the angels say, remember what he told you? Remember? It's one of the words Jesus uses at his last supper, and it's one of the first words we hear at the empty tomb. Remember. I think this call to remember is why we need a prayer of confession and these words of forgiveness every single week. It's not enough to hear about God's grace once. We need to hear it over and over again, week after week. We need to be reminded that God's grace and mercy will never run out. And so, friends, let us run to God like the women ran to the tomb. Let us tell the truth of our lives so that once again we can be reminded that our God is a God of grace and mercy and love. Let us pray so that we can remember. Would you join me? in our prayer for forgiveness. The stone is rolled away. We assume it is the angels say he is not here. We can hardly the women tell the story. Peter runs to the tomb. But we do not Forgive us, God when we assume an empty tomb is nothing more than a prank. Forgive us for discounting hope when you are alive and well in the world. Unravel the threads of our disbelief. Beloved, would you join me in a few moments of silent reflection as we lift up our own prayers to a listening God. People of God, hear this. The angels tell the women, remember what Jesus told you. So church, remember this. You are seen. You are forgiven. You are held in God's grace. You are loved. All of this is true. Grace and mercy abound. Hearing that, trusting it, I invite you to rise on your feet or in your hearts and to turn to one another with a word of peace. The peace of Christ be with you or also with you. A gesture, a hug, a handshake, a wave to those who are online, an emoji in the chat. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Amen. Get it. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. With you. Peace. 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 Show.
Amen. Friends, you may be seated. I want to invite forward the Reverend Bob Morse, who will be reading our scripture this morning, and all of the young people in the room, and Pastor Steve's going to join me, but we need the help of the young people this morning to tell the Easter story. And I know you're here because you just helped decorate the cross. So come back. Anybody who helped with the flowers, come on down. <laughs> this activity will be mostly safe, so come on down. We're going to ask you all to stand up top. So Steve, I think. Mm. Are you standing up top? You want me up top? I think you'd be up top so right. they can see you and everyone can see them and we can see each other. Because here's what's going to happen this morning. There they all are. Ooh, we got more coming. Dun, dun, dun. Come on. We are going but to wait, help there's more. bring the story of Easter to life this morning. While the Reverend Bob Morse reads the story, but I think we should practice first. Mm. Probably a good idea. I think it's yes, a great Pastor idea. Steve. Uh, All right. Absolutely. So, as we listen to the story, there will be opportunities for us to embellish. Ooh, Let's favorite. practice. Because, for example, there will be some women walking through the grass. So, can you make a swish, swish sound, maybe with your hands? Steve is going to demonstrate. Swish, 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 swish. Excellent. Y'all can play along with your hands. <laughs> Back and forth, like you're walking through the grass. Now, what happens if you're running through the grass? There you go. All right. There's going to be a really big stone that gets rolled aside. So let's make a stomping sound. Excellent. If you're confused or surprised, you might say, Huh? <laughs> and if you saw something stunning, you might say, oh. <clears throat> but if you're afraid, what would you do? Yikes! Yikes! <laughs> yes, maybe even hide. Yikes! Yes. Right? All right. When someone says he is risen, here comes the, the sun. sun. Do, 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 do. <laughs> right? One more time. Here, here comes, comes the, the sun. sun. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Fabulous. You forget and then you remember, so you say, Oh, oh yeah. yeah! You don't believe something someone tells you and you say, No, no way! <laughs> and finally, when you see something amazing, you say... Wow! <laughs> All right. You think, um, you think we got that? Let's see. Do you know your lines? No. 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 All right. All right. Make sure that I'm in order here. All right. So you all are leading the congregation so they know how to chime in. Mm -hmm. Are you ready, Reverend Morse? I am ready. Let's do this. Listen Our, closely to the story. Our scripture is from Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. <laughs> but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they huh? were perplexed about this. What? Huh? You got it. Suddenly, 
two men in dazzling clothes stood before them. <gasps> the women were terrified and Yikes! bowed their faces to the ground. Yikes! 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 But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Here, here comes, comes the sun. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the human one must be handed over to the hands of sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. Oh, yeah! And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Huh? Oh. Yikes! <laughs> Here comes, Here comes the, the sun. sun. Do, 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 do. <laughs> now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. No way. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Wow! Wow! The word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you. you may be seated. May God add a blessing to the reading and the telling of that holy word. Friends, would you join your hearts with mine in prayer? God of grace and wonder, oil the hinges of our heart's doors that they may swing easily open to welcome you. Amen. So let me ask you this, honestly, which inspires more excitement in your home, Christmas or Easter? All right, Christmas, raise your hand, honestly, honestly, Easter, raise your hand, uh-huh. So funny thing, Easter beats out Christmas in my household in one key respect. My family prefers Easter egg hunts to Christmas trees. Surprising though it may sound, I have family members in the younger generation who have never been particularly excited about opening gifts. 
In fact, as small children, they were so disinterested that one year, my sister, their aunt, hid all of the gifts and created a scavenger hunt, complete with clues to get them to search for and then maybe to open their presents. Easter has a treasure hunt built in. And it is so popular in my home that we have had years when we have spent the afternoon hiding, hunting for, and finding eggs, and then hiding them again. Parents and children alternating roles. So we would hide them for the kids, and then they would hide them for us, and then we would hide them again, and so on for hours. There is, as they say, something about the hunt, about the adventure of seeking that may stir up as much joy as the treasure itself. The women and Peter and really all the disciples found themselves in the middle of a scavenger hunt on that first Easter morning. Did you notice that the risen Christ never actually makes an appearance? Not in Luke's version. In the Gospel of Luke, you have to keep reading through the next chapter before the risen Christ appears to two men who are walking along the road to Emmaus. And even then, they don't recognize him until he drops an obvious hint takes a loaf of bread, blesses and breaks it the same way Jesus did with his disciples back on the night of his arrest. But first thing on Easter morning, all they had were clues. Signs left like breadcrumbs for the women and Peter and the other disciples to find. A tomb left open when it should have been sealed. A heavy rock rolled to the side. Burial linens abandoned on the floor. And two messengers, angels actually, posing cryptic questions. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. Like the game of hot and cold that we'd play when the kids couldn't find a cleverly hidden egg, the messengers say, nope, you're cold, so cold. You gotta look somewhere else. My question is, why? Why wasn't Jesus there to meet the women, the very women who had remained with him until the bitter end? who had watched from a distance as he took his last breath. And two days later, at the crack of dawn, had brought all those spices to care for his body in one final act of love and devotion. All through that devastating series of events, it was the women who had exercised the kind of courage it takes to stare down death and not look away. That's who stood in the abandoned tomb. So why would Jesus leave a note when he could have appeared to them in person? I wonder whether that absence was really a kind of invitation to those first witnesses to go looking, to strike out on something like a treasure hunt, to find signs of the risen Christ out in the world. Maybe that's what the angels were saying. The tomb, even an empty tomb, is not the end of the story, it is a new beginning. And to find out what happens next, you need to leave the tomb behind. 
You need to follow all the clues back down the road, back into the communities of which you are a part, eyes open along the way. Eyes open for glimpses of the risen Christ. Glimpses of resurrection happening, not just in a cemetery, but among the living in countless corners of creation. Perhaps it was Christ's way of getting them all to shift their focus, tipping them off that the resurrection was less about how one man somehow cheated death and more about how God is continually taking the most devastating things we can do or experience and transforming them into something unexpectedly life-giving. Spring flowers, where once there was only hard earth. Angels, where there was just a body. Fresh possibilities taking root where there was only despair. In the words of the theologian Frederick Beekner, resurrection means that the worst thing is never the last thing. Now, it can be hard to see past the worst things sometimes. Hard to believe when we are in the throes of grief, when it feels like there are more signs of death and destruction than there is evidence of goodness in the world, when Rome seems to be winning, it can be hard to see past the worst things. When companies value their profit margins more highly than the health and well-being of neighborhood children, when young people experience bullying and rejection so acute that they can't imagine a future for themselves, when gun violence can erupt at a moment's notice, and communities can't figure out or don't choose to figure out how to provide housing and healthy, accessible food for all of its residents. When deep-seated divisions persist and famine threatens and fires rage made worse by a warming climate, need I go on? And yet, and yet, why do you look for the living among the dead? The angels asked. God, it seems, has not given up on this precious planet. Even if on the hardest days we are tempted to do so. Beloved in Christ, God is busily working resurrection all around us among the still living, among the hungry and the hurting and anyone who is barely clinging to hope. And we, we are called to take notice, to be curious like the women, repeatedly amazed like Peter, called to train our eyes to search for evidence of that resurrection hidden in plain sight. Maybe you've already seen the signs, how a land devastated by wildfire can become a seedbed for a new forest, how a transgender child once struggling and withdrawn can blossom when empowered to claim their gender identity, 
when celebrated and given space to express their true selves. How a community can choose to learn from those on the margins, can rally together to transform a dumping ground into a garden, unused space into affordable housing. How hearts and minds can be changed and new relationships forged when we break bread together. Swap our stories of love and heartache over coffee and pastries. And doesn't the list go on? Once you start looking, you may just be surprised at how often you can catch glimpses of resurrection new beginnings forged in the very rubble of shattered lives. No wonder the tomb was abandoned. The risen Christ had places to be. Now in time, Christ would appear to several of the disciples, including the women, I assume. He would commission them and send them out to share God's love and grace. He wouldn't stick around, not in person, but he would prepare them to be Easter people, treasure hunters, ever searching for clues that the Spirit of Christ was at work in their midst. Over time, they would teach others how to recognize those same signs of resurrection. And now, friends, now it is our turn. Like the women at the tomb, like Peter, we are invited to live with our eyes peeled, our hearts full of hope, ever ready to be amazed by discoveries of God's hidden treasure. Here's what I suspect. That the more we look, the more likely we are to catch those glimpses of transforming love and grace in the world all around us. With practice, we might even learn to face the devastation, the hard news, the broken promise, the upended life with trust that somewhere tucked into its contours is one more divinely crafted resurrection ready to emerge. Beloved in Christ, this I believe that we can do that, that we can live as if the worst thing was not the last thing. We can prepare to be astonished. The angels have assured us that Christ is among the living, among us. Even now, new life is taking shape. That promise, that is our treasure. So let us seek it again and again and again. Let us claim that promise as God's good gift and share it with all those we meet, for in so doing, we will surely become God's Easter people. Beloved in Christ, we have heard it and so let us proclaim it. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Friends, it is Easter Sunday. It is a wonderful and a glorious thing to gather together as a church on a day like today. And looking out at this gathering, I am amazed at what I see. The body of Christ here and present in this place. And boy, does that body have some work to do. It is you, all of you, all of us, that make that work possible. The the generosity that we share, whether it's our time, our energy, our ideas, our passions, our faith, or our money, it is our generosity that makes everything we do here possible. I invite you to consider how generous you can be and to be just as generous as you are able. Give of yourself what you can, and know that whatever you give, God will put to good work. Let us take a moment of prayerful quiet as we consider how we are called to be generous on this great and glorious Easter day. If you didn't catch it, there is a QR code in your bulletin. There is a box at the back of the room, and you can go online to fccucc.org to give those gifts that Steve lifted up this day. We ask God's blessing on all that good generosity and on all those gathered here. I meant to say that. And now, friends, here's how it happened. Love looked down and saw hate. I'll go there, said love. Peace looked down and saw war. I'll go there, said peace. Hope looked down and saw despair. I'll go there said hope. And so Jesus walked among us. For three years he traveled the highways and the byways. He found the hopeless, the heartless, the hungry. He taught and fed and healed and blessed. And then one night he gathered at a Passover meal with his friends and his followers, and he said to them, in a little while, I will leave you. But I am never really gone. I remain. Wherever you give thanks and break bread and share it, I am there. Remember that. And they did. They remembered. And they told those that they met who told others that they met, who told their grandchildren, who told their grandchildren, who told their great, great, great grandchildren, who told someone, who told someone, who told us. Told us that we are invited to this table too. So now, friends, we gather at this table to meet the living Christ, Lord of love, Prince of peace, source of hope in the breaking of the bread. Come, let us gather round. Pray away. 
pray away. Friends, as we prepare to gather at the table, let us join our hearts together in prayer. We give thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for calling forth creation and raising us from the dust by the breath of your very being. We bless you for the beauty and bounty of this earth and for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We pray this day for those who remain trapped in the tombs of oppression or despair, for those of us healing from addiction. God, roll the stone away, we pray. For those of us seeking mental or physical health, O oh God, bring your balm to our bodies and our minds. For people still long for justice, we pray. For trans youth and siblings created in your image, for black and brown siblings longing for liberation from the threat of violence. O God, call forth new life, we pray. For neighbors hungry for food and for peace, including the peoples of Ukraine, Gaza, and Haiti, we pray, O God, lead us into a new day. We ask this, all of this, even as we rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to change everything. You taught us to pray together, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, Mother, Mother in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily, daily bread, bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It was on the night that he was betrayed that Jesus gathered with his friends and disciples, paused during the meal, took bread, gave thanks, blessed it, broke it, and said, this is my body given for you. As often as you eat this, do so, and remember me. In the same manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup, He gave thanks for it, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant given to you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of this, remember me. And so now we gather to share this feast, ordinary bread and cup made extraordinary by the presence of the risen Christ. Would you join your hearts with mine as we bless these good gifts? And if you are at home, I invite you to extend your own hands over the food that you have set on your table. And together we will bless all our tables. Come, Holy Spirit. Bless this bread, this cup, all our tables, everyone gathered around them, that we may be renewed and prepared to be your Easter people in the world. We ask it in your holy name. 
Amen. Friends, here's what will happen next. You are invited to come forward to one of four stations. There'll be a pair, two pairs on this side and two pairs on that side. If you come down through the center aisle, come to one of the spots, take a piece of bread and dip it in the cup, return to your seat by the side aisles. If you prefer to take a set of pre-wrapped communion and not come into contact with a person, we will have that plate at the center of the table for you to receive. If you would like someone to come to you in your seat, please wave a hand, and once we have served those who have moved through the lines, we will look for you and come and find you. And so we will all feast. One more thing. On the night of which we spoke, among those gathered with Jesus at table, there was one who would betray him, one who would deny him, and many who would abandon him before the end. Jesus knew this, and he welcomed them all. So too are you welcomed at this table, wherever you find yourself on your journey. You do not need to be free of doubt. You do not need to have it all sorted out. You do not need to be good. All you need to be is hungry. Come. These are God's gifts for all God's people. And it is now ready.
Christ in our midst. We give thanks that you have refreshed us at your table. Now send us out to live as Easter people with open eyes and open hearts. Love is abroad. We will spread the news. We will sing with joy. Hallelujah. Friends, we conclude Easter this morning by singing together the Hallelujah Chorus. And if you would like to be part of the choir, I invite you to stand now and to come on forward up the stairs and into the chancel where there are scores to help you sing along. Those who remain in the pews, I invite you also to rise on your feet or in your hearts as we hear and sing together the Hallelujah Chorus.
in Christ, our worship is ending, but resurrection continues. Go out to find it, and as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you seek signs of new life around every corner and look for Christ in every face. May wonder be your constant companion and holy anticipation your guide. And may the upwelling grace of Jesus Christ and the overflowing love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit move through and among us all. Let the people say amen. Amen. amen.